The best Stream Deck alternative has gotten even better. Now you can control stuff with sliders or faders. Either way, let's get into it. My name is Chris, this is Coalition Gaming, and today I'll be your stream technician. Real quick, if you're new around here and are into tech, PC hardware, gaming, stream tips, tutorials, news and reviews, then you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button and that bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, I stream to Twitch every Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific at twitch.tv slash coalition gaming crew. So feel free to stop by, drop a follow, and let's talk some stream tech. Anyways, let's get to the video. I did a video a long time ago when Touch Portal first hit the scene, showing how it's a fantastic Stream Deck alternative you could use to change scenes and do other things. Touch Portal has evolved a lot since then, and honestly is more powerful than I can fully take advantage of. That aside, they recently had a huge update, and one of the features they added was the ability to control audio sources both inside and outside of OBS with uh, on-screen sliders. Honestly, this is huge. For basic usage for the majority of streamers, the ability to use Touch Portal to change scenes and control OBS sources was plenty, but now we have finer audio control as well. Mm, this, this is a streamer's dream. But enough of me talking about it, let's get down to the desktop so I can show you what I mean. So here we are at the desktop and uh, I've got OBS recording my screen and I've got a camera on a tablet. So for what I'm doing here today with Touch Portal, I'm installing it on an Android tablet. You could use a phone, you could use an, an Android phone or an iPhone and it's available for, for those platforms or an iPad, something like that. So whatever you choose to install it to, look in the App Store or in the Google Play Store and you'll find it there. You'll also need to install a companion app on the computer itself. That's where you're gonna be controlling it and programming it and doing all the stuff, configuring it. So make sure you download Touch Portal on the PC, the OBS WebSocket plugin for, well, OBS, for Touch Portal to communicate to OBS, and, uh, and there you go. So Touch Portal software, OBS WebSocket plugin, Touch Portal on your device of choice, and then you should be all set for the next step once it's all installed. Of course, I'll leave links down in the description below to all of this stuff, so uh, that way you won't have to dig so hard for it. <laughs> all that said, as you can see right now, I have my uh, some basic buttons set up to change scenes, as you can see here. Um, there's the in-game scene, which will actually just kind of be <laughs> kind of blank right now because that's not configured. But we also have the talking scene, and the talking scene here is where the camera, the webcam is pointed at the screen. You can see how I have the buttons arranged. So let's get back over to desktop so you guys can see that it's capturing uh, the desktop and I can walk you through the faders, the, the sliders part. So I'm gonna go to the main page where I've already set some up, which is uh, right there. Let's uh, go to main page, which is like this, uh, main. And you can see I already have mute headset, spe speakers, headset, microphone, OBS desktop audio, OBS mic, and alerts. So these are like some basics that I think would be good to have. In order to actually do a, a fader though, you just click on any of the available boxes that Touch Portal shows you. You click it. And here on the top left, where it's on the edit control screen, you'll see touch button or slider. And I've gone ahead and selected slider. I've gone down for this one because it's configured to the speakers of the laptop, media functions, and then I selected the second one. Connect, set volume windows, um, set volume windows audio source. The first one is just like outright, it, like this one right here, as you can see I added it. It just controls audio output or audio input, whatever that happens to be configured. I don't really like that one too much because you lack of configuration, if you know what I mean. The second one looks like this. And so once you add the second one, you get a drop down box here, audio output, audio input. But then if you select, let's say audio output, you can select whatever audio output device is available to you. That being USB headphones or speakers. That's the speakers built in the laptop. If you have multiple audio devices, output devices on your computer, it will show on this list and then you will be able to use this fader to control the volume of any of those audio output devices so long as you can figure enough of these faders to do so. So with that selected, I've gone, I've gone ahead and named it by, by clicking the T over here. I typed speakers right there, I lined it to the top 
And then for something else I liked, the visualization and the control settings in the bottom right here, I've clicked rectangle. Rectangle is nice, you can see circle, but that's like moving a circle up and down. I like the rectangle because it kind of gives you an idea of where your level is at. And then I go ahead and save it. And now um, here, I'm gonna open up the, uh, the basic Windows volume mixer here, open volume mixer, and I'm gonna move the volume of the speakers right there so if i move the volume of the speakers this is right here on this device you can see i'm moving the fader up and down let me actually change scenes for you guys to see what's going on here talking scene go to main page and so i'm going to move the the speakers fader up and down and at the same time you can see that that is also moving the fader inside the windows volume mixer so let's go over a little bit more of what I've done because I also have my headset, which as you saw, sl slider, media functions, the second selection for the set volume, Windows audio source, audio output selected, and then speakers five, USB audio device. That is my headset. And now I can control the volume of anything going to my headset. Now, this is where audio routing comes in handy. I have a video on audio routing using the Windows Advanced Volume Mixer, and I'll link it right up here and down in the description below, but I'll bring it up on screen right now. Here's some audio routing. You can actually set, let's say Firefox. I want Firefox, right now it's going to default, but I have two choices. I can click this and output it to my headphones specifically. If I set it to my headphones, I'll bring up uh, a song to play, right? And you guys can hear that. And you guys can hear that and you see now it's going to my headphones and if i move the the slider the fader for speakers it won't have any effect on that one so let me show you that one here i am moving the speakers and you can hear that nothing's changing but if i move headset to me in my ears i can't hear anything now if i move up here it's louder to me now what I found out about this is here in OBS, if I move this one for headset, it's quiet to me, but OBS is still hearing it at its volume. This is significant. This is almost like submixes as a matter of fact, because I'm controlling what I'm hearing separately from what the stream is hearing. That's pretty big. Okay, so back at the touch portal scene here, what's cool is you can also use these faders to control the volume of uh, input device like a microphone. And here we are with a microphone and uh, I went ahead and did the same thing, set volume windows, this is the second selection here, which pops up this one. And then I go to audio input instead of audio output. And with that, I just select the microphone that I want to control the volume of. And so if I'm talking, and we'll bring up OBS for this one, you can see here the microphone is bouncing up and down. If I'm talking and I need to lower the volume of the microphone, I can just move the fader or I bring it back up and there it is a little bit. I move it down a little quieter. Yeah, so microphone volume control also on a fader right there. And then the last couple of things I wanna show you guys inside of uh, Touch Portal with that is OBS specific control. So here are the faders again. Now where I click on a button to bring up a slider, click slider and instead of hitting media functions, which is what I was doing previously, I'm going to select OBS and then click set source volume. And then you see this pop up come here. Then uh, you see here control OBS volume of source desktop audio. You can hit that drop down and boom, look at all that. You can control the individual volume of these things inside of OBS separately from outside your stream. Literally only your stream will hear the changes made to these if you're using the faders inside of Touch Portal to make those using control OBS volume of source. So as you can see here, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up and uh, you can see the faders now on the screen. When the faders on the screen, if I wanna, let's say, let's play some music again one more time. Now I can control OBS desktop audio. You see the fader moving right there, right? Now you guys can't hear anything. I still hear it in my headphones too, but now the stream doesn't hear it. Bring it back up, I can control it all right there. That's pretty freaking cool. Now I can even control the volume of the OBS microphone right here. You can see the fader inside of OBS moving there. 
right? Cool. And uh, let's say you have loud alerts that you want to stay on top of sometimes too. Well, you can have that in OBS as well configured and you can control the volume of your alerts on a fader. You got the ultimate stream audio control right here. It's pretty freaking cool. To the guys at Touch Portal, Ty and Rainier, you guys are awesome. Software like this is what makes life easier when it comes to stream control, so it's just fantastic to have access to something like this, even the free version. Not that the paid unlimited pages version of Touch Portal costs much, it's between 10 to $20 depending on your region, but even the free version can get a lot done. If there's anything I'd like to see in a future update, it's for the sliders to be able to control individual volume sources in the Windows Advanced Audio Mixer and for a slider function to control the audio of whatever is in focus on the computer, much like uh, what could be accomplished with the Korg Nano Control 2 and MIDI Mixer or NK2 tray. Get subscribed though. If you think this is the last video on a budget but awesome stream control device, there's definitely more to come. If you found this video useful, informative, or otherwise entertaining, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and that bell. Also, don't forget, I stream to Twitch every Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific, so feel free to stop by, drop a follow, and let's talk tech. Anyways, that does it for me. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Plenty of content over here. All sorts of stream tips, stream tech, other videos. We got tons of stuff. Click one. You should click one. If you don't click one, you'll get bad luck. Have you clicked one yet? Okay, bye.